When it comes to Amazon ads, your campaign management structure is a key piece of the puzzle. And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through the simple four campaign structure that I've been testing over the last four to six months and are about to roll out across all our products because I'm really pleased with the results we're seeing. So I'm going to break that down for you today. Welcome to the channel. My name is Ben. I'm the founder of brandbuilderuni.com, where our goal is to help you build a brand that you own and a life that you love. Uh, to anybody that's watching for the first time, welcome. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. All of the returning visitors, thank you so much for your support as ever. I really appreciate it. You may have noticed that I've not uploaded anything for a few weeks, and that is mainly because it's been summer holidays. The kids have been at home and trying to spend a bit more time with them, but also because we've been reworking how we're going to do some of the content on the channel. And one of the things that I'm excited to share with you is that we are launching the Brand Builder Show. The Brand Builder Show is a new podcast aimed at uh, helping Amazon sellers become brand builders. We're bringing Bringing on some really great guests, really excited about the first lineup of guests we've got coming on. It's going to be a weekly podcast that's going to be available on uh, iTunes, on Spotify, all the normal ones, but also here on YouTube. So if you want to be the first to hear about when that first episode drops next week, then make sure you are subscribed with those notifications on. And I'm really excited to bring you on that journey of grilling these brand builders and successful entrepreneurs. And uh, yeah, excited for you to be part of that. But anyway, on to today's topic, which is all about campaign structure with your Amazon ads. As I say, I've been testing this structure for around four to six months now and have been really pleased with the results it's creating. I noticed it was a structure that was becoming more popular in different tools. So it really gives way for a lot of automation, which is, of course, great. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video, as well as show you some real life results from one of the campaign structures that we've set up with this. And like I say, I'm so pleased so far with the results results, but also with the uh, optimization of time uh, that we're going to, we're just about to roll this out across all products or marketplaces, accounts, that kind of thing. Really what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through what that structure is, and then I'm going to talk you through why. This is a little bit of a change in structures. I used to teach more of like a six campaign structure, eight campaign structure, even testing things in a, in a bit of a different way, which can leave you open to, um, you know, a lot of extra work. But like anything in this game, there's always room for improvement and uh, nothing really stands still for too long. Strategies always evolve over time and this is part of that evolving strategy that I really do believe is the best practice for your PPC campaign structure. So here's what the, the structure is that we're using at the moment and I would uh, you know, definitely suggest at least giving a go with one of your products. And here it is, the first campaign at the top of the tree causes an auto campaign. Now, some people would say, oh, auto campaigns are dead. You know, you've got so many keyword tools that you don't need them anymore. Now, whilst that there is a, a grain of truth in that, I think to throw the whole idea of auto campaigns out just because you've got better keyword tools is a little bit of a waste, in my opinion, for reasons which I'll get into. Uh, then coming down the tree on the right-hand side, right or left doesn't, <laughs> there's no right or left inside of Amazon, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, coming down this tree, then we're going to have our research campaign campaign. Now your auto campaign, of course, is going to be uh, an auto uh, targeting uh, broad match. So it's going to really match anything based on your listing. Amazon algorithm is going to determine all of that. By the way, if any of this terminology doesn't make sense to you, if you're a beginner with PPC, this maybe isn't the, the first video you should watch. The first video is the one in the description below, which is a complete tutorial for beginners. It's about an hour long and I'll walk you through a glossary of key terms uh, and all that kind of stuff. But I will get to a section in that video where I talk about campaign structure and I talk about six campaigns. And this is the uh, what I believe is the optimal updated version of that. So if you're a beginner, go check out that video. But at that point, come back to this one. Uh, so your auto campaign is, is broad in nature, of course. Your research campaign is also going to be broad. Uh, but this one is a broad, is, is a manual campaign. So you are giving Amazon the keywords, a list of keywords that you're going to target, and they're going to be a broad match. And at least that's what we're setting up. And then your scale campaign. This is what we call scale, or it could be performance, or it could be proven, whatever you want that to be. But the idea of this campaign is this is where our budget can go to the moon. We want to spend that budget all day long. Uh, we, we want to get it to the point where we can't spend any more. We can't physically spend any more because customers aren't searching enough for the search terms in it to be able to spend that budget. And so that's going to be another manual campaign. 
excuse my horrendous writing, and that is going to be exact match. And then coming over here on the other side of the structure, again, there's no sides on Amazon, but just to give you the visual of it, is our product targeting campaign. Now, there's no sort of research and scale side of the product campaign because your auto campaign is going to find the products which I'll go into in a sec and then you don't have anywhere to go there's no broad match for your product targeting campaign so it only needs one campaign there which is good it simplifies the whole structure if you know the old structure I used to teach you would need six campaigns just for this side of it and then you know a couple more over here so it really does halve your workload once you've got it set up it's just there's a little bit more nuance a little bit more detail in the setup which I'm going to walk you through now because I'm going going to cover why do this what's the reasoning behind this what's the purpose behind all of this well the first one is keyword harvesting keyword harvesting is this principle this idea that your campaign structure is going to continually find new and profitable keywords for you if you've followed me for a while you'll know uh you know one of the things that i really work hard on is finding long tail keywords because you know the money is in the long tail as seo experts would tell you and so it's really important to find those long specific relevant keywords because they're going to be very cheap the, the volume will be low but the more that you can generate of them then uh, you're going to be able to build ppc campaigns out that are profitable because you've got lots of them so the volume is there but also the cost is low that's the theory right it's obviously a long drawn out process to get there but that's the theory and it's an essential theory really now in 2021 when i'm recording this video because ppc of course like anything it is getting more competitive and people are understanding it more five years ago you could throw up an auto and manual campaign uh, jobs you know jobs are good and you, you kind of you're done there because nobody really knew how to manage PPC campaigns. Whereas now people are getting a lot more switched on. People are, you know, going through training like this and understanding how to manage these campaigns. And so if you want to be one of the top performers on Amazon, you need to get your head around this stuff. And so keyword harvesting is something that's really important to be able to continually find those keywords. And, and how that works in this structure is that your auto campaign I would always recommend setting to a very low default bid, you know, 40 cents, 50 cents, something like that. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to go out and find the broadest range of keywords. Then your research and scale campaigns are going to be a little bit more focused. But the essential thing with keyword harvesting here in the research campaign is that we're going to take the broad keywords that we've got here and we're going to add them back in to our auto campaign as negative keywords negative keywords so exact match negative keywords to make sure that the keywords we've got in this research campaign are not going to be spending money in the auto campaign we don't want that to happen because what we want uh, in this auto campaign we want something called search term isolation search term isolation as the name suggests comes from where you're going to be isolating search terms into specific campaigns theoretically in the ideal situation is that you're only ever uh, going to be showing for certain search terms from one campaign within your campaign structure this really helps you with things that we'll go on to mention in a minute so then on the final uh, scale campaign the exact match keywords we're also going to add these as negative keywords back into the research campaign so you know you may have 20 uh, keywords in your scale campaign to begin with or 10 whatever you know you start with and you may have sort of 50 in here so you're going to put those 50 back into your auto as a negative exact and you're going to put those 20 back into your research as a negative exact again which means that the keywords that you've got in your scale campaign are never going to show in your research campaign and that, that's going to allow you to really uh, manage this structure well and grow your account which again we'll talk about in a moment and then finally you're going to grab any ASINs any products that are converting from your auto campaign and you're going to bring them down here into the product campaign and that's going to allow you to have number two the second reason and that is bid and budget management right it's going to allow us to manage our bids and our budgets really well because we're going to be able to set them at a level that we're comfortable with it means that we know the keywords we have in our scale campaign are the keywords that convert and so the end result of this is we have this scale campaign where we've got a whole list of proven keywords that we can set a, a bid level four and manage that by the keyword because it's exact match we can manage that bid level we don't have to you know keep negativing stuff out we can just manage the bid level up or down to where it's the most profitable and that becomes like a, a incredibly honed and perfected campaign that we can continue to drive profitable spend through and so then of course that leads to number three reason why is scalability 
scalability. You got the picture there. Because of course, we want to be able to scale these campaigns. And if we just stick to an auto or just broad match and don't do any of this structure or this flow where we're bringing keywords through from the auto to the research to the scale, then we won't have the ability to scale those because we haven't proven and tested those keywords. So those are the reasons why uh, I'm doing this structure. Uh, then of course, the question comes up, well, well, how do I know when to move search terms from one campaign as keywords into another campaign well what you want to do is you really want to establish a set of rules rules can either be set up using software and you can automatically implement them or you can implement them by going through your search term report understanding these rules and manually implementing them that the main ones that you're going to want to have for keyword harvesting are, are the following you're going to want to have some rules that are going to take keywords or product targets from your auto campaign to your broad or your research campaigns your your broad research or your product campaign and then i believe personally my preference is to have a, another set of rules that takes keywords from your broad to your exact from your research to your scale some people would just set it up as one rule across you know the same rule across from auto to broad and broad to exact but i personally like to set it up uniquely for the reasons i'll go into now so the rules that i have set i'm currently working with at the moment is for me to promote a keyword from the auto campaign into the broad campaign, I wanna see at least two sales, and I wanna see uh, an ACoS that is around 10 to 15% above my target ACoS. Or, or maybe if, if I'm being quite aggressive with the launch, maybe 20% above my target ACoS. Maybe I'll go 50% ACoS. And of course, these are you know my numbers, and I'm testing these and moving these all the time, and you should definitely do the same, but just to give you a bit of a guide and, and the principles with which we're using. And then when it comes to the broad to exact it is around three to four sales. I want to see three to four sales on a search term before I move it from the broad campaign to the exact campaign. And I want to see it, of course, at a profitable ACoS. I want to see it at a good ACoS. And the reason for those different levels is because I want to take something from auto and test it more thoroughly in broad quicker than I want to take something from broad and into my scale exact campaign. And so I want to be more lenient from auto to broad to allow there to be more keywords coming through that funnel but then I want to be more stringent when it comes to that exact campaign because I want to have every confidence in that exact campaign that I can up that budget I can up those bids I can really drive that forward so that's kind of why the difference is there so I'm going through those campaigns I'm looking for the search terms uh, that are converting and those ones that are converting based on those thresholds I'm moving them down that campaign structure or up however you want to use the terminology again you can use tools to, to help with this um, but that is how you can do it also uh, manually of course, the fundamental key with this is make sure that when you do this, you add them as a negative keyword in the above campaign. So if I'm moving a keyword from the auto to broad, I need to make sure that at the same time, I'd create a negative keyword in the auto campaign. If I'm moving it from the broad to the exact, again, I need to make sure I'm adding it as a negative keyword into the broad campaign to make sure that I'm getting that search term isolation and is allowing me to manage those budgets moving forward. Now, finally, when it comes to adding negative keywords for search terms that aren't performing, I actually keep the same rule at the moment across them. Let me know what you think on that. I don't know if you're gonna maybe test something different, but at the moment, you, you know, if it's got zero sales uh, after a certain amount of clicks, then I'm going to add it as a negative keyword. I'm quite generous on this because I can stomach uh, a higher ACoS for a period of time because I understand this is a long game, but you have to think about how you're going to go about this. I would recommend going for at least two times your conversion rate. If you have a conversion rate of 10%, generally it's going to take around 10 clicks to get a sale. So go for at least 20 clicks. You know, I, I know it's going to be hard. I know you're going to have to stomach a bit of loss, uh, but at the same time, the more aggressive you are with this, the lower the click threshold you set, uh, the more likelihood there is of uh, cancelling out keywords that could in time when averages play out actually be profitable for you. So that's why I, I'm a bit generous with that. But uh, I'm keeping them the same at the moment, these two here. Uh, but maybe you're going to do, do different. Would love to hear from you what you are planning. Now, there's a whole load more we could go into there when it comes to bid management, setting rules for how you're going to manage your bids around your ACoS, all that kind of stuff. And I know I've gone over this principle pretty quickly, but I wanted to really give you an overview, see if it was something that interested you guys and hopefully helps you to explore the idea of setting campaign structure yourself. You certainly don't have to follow mine, 
But, uh, you know, I, I would recommend at least setting up something that is simple once you set it up. There's a bit more detail in it because you do need to add negative keywords as you go, but that allows you to really isolate those search terms and grow those budgets and hopefully grow profitability. Now, just to show you a real life example of uh, one of the ones I've been testing this on, uh, and you can see here, I've got an auto, a research and a proven campaign. And this is where uh, it really helps you to be able to look, zoom out and look at your campaign or your product uh, account as a whole. Because as you can see, the auto campaign here is 50% ACoS. Now, most people will think, oh, Ben, you're talking about PPC and you got 50% ACoS, you suck. You've got no idea what you're doing. And, you know, some people <laughs> might have an argument with, with that. But 50% but ACoS, you might think, oh, that's way too high and stress out about it. But I know that, that there's a functionality. There's a reason why that's high is because it's very broad. Uh, is because it's going out there and farming for keywords, looking for keywords all the time, and it's going to throw some stuff up there that's irrelevant. My click-through rate is super low with that auto campaign, and it shows that it's really going wide, it's going broad with those keywords, but it's finding new keywords that it's then putting into the research campaign all the time. And this research campaign is 38%. Now, again, you'll be thinking, well, 38% is not really going to be profitable or scalable for most products. Uh, you know, so why, why are you happy with that? Well, I'm happy with that because, of course, the overall picture, the proven campaign, the scale campaign is 17% ACoS at much higher spend. This is over the last 90 days, much higher spend. And that's allowing us to look at the, the bigger picture of this product. And when you average all of these, you know, spend and sales and ACoS together, it's around about 25% ACoS right across this product. So I know because I've set up this campaign structure it's got a purpose is moving those keywords up the campaign structure and it's allowing us to set targets set goals and really hit those goals with our ACoS because of the, the the wider view of the campaigns whereas if we just had that one campaign or the two campaigns and we looked at them in isolation I might have given up a long time ago with 50% ACoS I'd have been pretty you know pretty frustrated with 38% ACoS as well but because we're moving the keywords up we're proving them out and these two campaigns are more about testing I know that overall, across the whole product, it's going to average out well. So uh, this software I'm using here is Celex. You guys know I'm a big fan of the Benchmarker tool, uh, which you can grab for free down below. It's going to basically benchmark you against your competition. It's going to show you your performance on a monthly basis. I love getting this monthly checkup and uh, on my PPC performance when it comes through. Uh, last few months have been going well. I was uh, up, it, it ranks your performance now, which I love this feature. Uh, a couple of months ago, it was silver, uh, June gold july it went up to platinum which is amazing and they give you this kind of like uh certificate which is so cool as well and uh made me feel good getting that one and uh, we'll see what the next month comes out as but this tool is really helpful for analyzing this kind of thing your overall campaign structure because it's going to give you your uh, overall account performance in one snapshot review but then it's also going to give you your account structure and it's going to show you how well optimized you are for this kind of structure so you've got different metrics here like your ad groups per campaign your ASINs per ad groups your keywords per ad groups it's going to show you if you are in the the kind of the best practice range and it's going to benchmark that against your competitors so uh, it's not just in isolation am I doing well on my own stats it's actually against your competition and seeing uh, if I'm you know getting these best practices right here so of course you want to have you know ideally as few ad groups per campaign as possible you want to have as few ASINs per ad groups as possible and keywords to ad groups because that's going to really help you isolate these search terms, isolate these keywords, grow your budgets, grow your sales, and ultimately grow your profit, which is what this is all about. So you can grab your free benchmarker report below. Definitely worth checking out, checking out the Selix suite of tools there as well to really help you grow your PPC. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you are interested in learning more about this, there's more resources down below. There'll also be a link to sign up there for the waitlist for when the PPC Masters is re-available. Again, we've only included that for full BBU memberships over the last sort of year or so, but we've been making a load of improvements on the PPC Masters and uh, you know really excited about all those improvements so we are going to be opening it up for potentially a short period of time for sale on its own so if you want to be the first to hear about that then you can sign up for the waitlist below if i can answer any questions if i can help with anything else if you've got anything that you want to chat through please feel free to leave a comment don't forget to subscribe with those notifications on to hear more about the brand builder show launching next week and uh and all our other great content we've got planned coming your way i hope this video helps you on your ppc journey and i'll see you in the next one real soon